No matter where we are, it doesn't matter. It's Salah time, prayer. <laughs> We're in the dance. Okay, we go outside. He said, go, go. So I would wait for him, make sure he finished. I'm sitting there, I'm like, he's praying like Jesus. And I said, bro, like... very young age I was influenced in believing in God mostly due to my grandma and she was a very practicing Catholic and I spent a lot of time with her and um, I used to go on the way to school stop at church pray take any of the kids that were walking with me to school like I'd force them you have to come pray <laughs> it was like a, a whole movement in my neighborhood you know and then going back home I used to again go to church every time I crossed the street I used to cross myself every time I crossed by a church it was it was quite practicing I was reading the Bible it was not just doing it like I was attending classes and um, my family were quite uh, surprised that at such a young age I have such a dedication my grandma, of course, she was very happy. She was like, you're going to be a priest. You know, you're going to be a priest. She always pushed me in the front at the altar next to the priest. believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Like, I, Do you really believe He's the Son? Even though I've been asked the question many times. But that one time, I felt a doubt. So for the first time, I have to be honest with myself and with someone else. In my mind, I paused and I think, wait a second, like what's going on here? This is something's not right. I need to learn more. And it's a funny incident because I was pushing, he was pushing. I mean, I was trying to take him away from his practice and he was trying to get me closer to God. But I remember one thing that he never gave up Salah, Namaz. He would always pray. No matter where we are, it doesn't matter. It's Salah time, prayer. We're like walking in downtown. We're going to dance. <laughs> We're in the dance. Okay, we go outside. He said, go, go. Time. So I would wait for him, make sure he finished so no one comes and no one bothers him. The first thing I'm seeing is, Wait a second, why is he doing it? And second of all, I was observing how he's doing it. And naturally, I had to ask him, I said, bro, we're dancing, we're chilling, we're doing this, going there, but you're praying. I felt there's a contradiction. He said, no. He said, because I know what, this, what I'm doing is wrong, and this is the correct door to God, and I cannot close this door. And that made me think. Actually, I felt jealous, to be honest, in my own practice, because I said, I'm not as committed as he is, yet I feel I'm on the truth. And look at this man, how committed. It's not just that, look at how he prays. And another thing that really got me intellectually was that I was reading the Bible, and the description of the prayer of the prophets in the Bible is the way he prays, by falling on his face, basically, right? That's what they describe as it. It's funny because even the Romanians would make fun of the, the way the Turks pray, but they say they fall on their face. But that's exactly how the Bible describes the prophets. And prophet Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, he fell on his face to pray to God. So I knew these things. So somehow, even though I've seen him, I've studied it all my life, it never connected. But this day it connected. It was a morning, Fajr time. We're in Toronto, Canada. We went to buy a car and we were waiting outside of my dad's uh, place. And it was Fajr time and he was praying. I had to pour water for him, he's making wudu, and he's praying. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, he's praying like Jesus. And I said, bro, like, do you know you guys pray like what? He says, of course I know, because Jesus was a Muslim. And I was like, no, come on, what do you mean? He's a Christian. He said, no, in the worst case that he's a Jew, right? Because ethnically, that's what they were. But there was no Christianity back then. I was like, he's right, he's right. I have to be honest, he's right. And why don't we pray like that? You don't see the priest go and make his sujood. I mean, there's certain sects of Christianity that still do it. So that was, again, a huge hit. A huge doubt came on, on me to the point that I actually left Christianity. I had a dream about Jesus one time. It was very interesting because um, I was driving him. He was in the back seat and he was laying down, he was tired. And he was wearing a, a jalabiya, a thobe. 
and he was wearing running shoes like Adidas. I know, it's a weird dream. He was telling me, I'm tired, Gabriel, you know, I'm tired. And I stopped the car and all these people were coming to him. Oh, Jesus, God. He looks at me like they're coming around the car. You know, like when there's like a famous person and he told me, he's like, look at them. They think I'm God and I'm tired. He said, I'm laying down here tired and they think I'm God. It was very, again, very vivid. up one day and I was at the lowest at the lowest and in my mind I said what are you waiting for you know you know this is the truth I went to university and I saw my friend come off and I said I need you to come to my house tonight I said I need your help with something she said are you okay I said you just have to come so he said okay no problem it was night and I just looked at him I said he said what's wrong bro are you okay I said I want to be a Muslim and he said, wow, oh, he said, I knew it. I said, what do you mean? He's like, remember that long tarawih that we prayed together? He said, in sujood, I was praying all life. This guy is looking for you. Guide him to Islam. Let him embrace Islam. And he just said, repeat after me. I already knew what I have to say. When I said my shahad, I felt that heaviness being lifted from me. <laughs>